Ho hello there. I'm Bochen Acute Bear. Hi, I'm Nima. Who doesn't have dark circles under the eyes? <laughs> Me neither. I didn't mean it that way. Hara. <laughs> I'm also a keeper, Nimicon. So, Teacher Bill Chen. What is it, Nimicon? Last time we talked. That depending on the value of x. An equation can be true. Or false right. He is simply put, that's right. So what is the x in the equation? It's called a variable. It's like a mark for an unknown number. Like this? Yes, exactly. It's like a question mark. So with the value of the variable or the question mark unchanged, transform the equation. And we'll find the solution to the original equation that is, the value that makes the original equation true. So, can I use a real question mark instead of x? Sure. Why not? It's not a problem. You can use question mark. But it's the same as x. Yes, so using a question mark is no problem at all. Really? Hara. <laughs> You noticed a very good point. As you said, the variable is just a symbol for an unknown number. You could use a fabus like x, or y, or symbols like question mark, or a square. Even more extreme, you can use pictures. So any expression is okay as long as it works as a symbol? It's just like that. But be careful. If the same symbol appears more than once in the same equation, you should know that the same symbol means the same value. If you change all to the same symbol like this, or like this, the essence of the expression is unchanged. But if you use the different symbols like this, this variable, and this variable aren't same. Then the meaning of the equation will change. What will it mean then? Well, in the original equation, if value of x is 3, it's like this. If value of x is minus 1, it's like this. Got it? Ah. Uh. In this new equation, if value of square is 6 and value of sunshine is 8, it's like this. If value of square is minus 1 and value of sunshine is 3, it's like this. Understood? I see. Because square and sunshine are different variables, they can have different values. Exactly, that's what it means. And it's no problem if different variables happen to have the same value. What do you mean? For example, in this equation, if value of square is 3 and value of sunshine is also 3, it would look like this. If value of square is minus 1 and value of sunshine is also minus 1, it would look like this. Got it? Ah. Oh. Let's consider an easier example. In this same equation, square and sunshine appear in multiple places. Then what happens? If value of square is 1 and value of sunshine is 3, it would look like this. If value of square is 5 and value of sunshine is minus 2, it would look like this. If value of square is 5 and value of sunshine is also 5, it would look like this. And if value of square is minus 1 and value of sunshine is also minus 1, it would look like this. Oh, I see. 
the squares are the same variable, so they must have the same value. And the sunshines are the same variable, so they must have the same value. But since square end, sunshine are different variables. This value end, this value king b, different. Or it's okay if they happen to have the same value like this. Yes, exactly. And when we use two variables, it's common to use six and y. I see, that's why we can just do six. Right. Then let's get back to the equation. Okay. With this equation, if value of square is six and value of sunshine is eight, it would look like this. If value of square is minus one and value of sunshine is three, it would look like this. All right. Right. Haral. So then, is this equation correct? Well, when calculated, it turns into 28 equals 28. So it must be correct, right? Yes, correct. That means when value of square is 6 and value of sunshine is 8, the original equation is true. So the pair of values square equals 6 and shine equals 8 is one of the solutions to the original equation. Oh, I got it. Because the original equation has two variables. The values for square and sunshine together make one solution. Yes, exactly. Well done. Now, if the equation has three variables like this, what form does the solution take? Well, this equation has three variables, xi and z. So the values for x, y and z together would make one solution. Yes, great answer. Let's go back to the original equation. Okay. Is this equation correct? Well, the equation turns into minus 7 equals 13. So it's wrong, right? Yes, it is. So, what can we say about the solution of the original equation? Hum, if square is minus 1 and sunshine is 3, the equation doesn't work. So, minus 1 for square and 3 for sunshine is not a solution. Yes, you are totally right. I have one more thing to say. Go ahead. When you transform the equation, if you don't use variables consistently like this, and switch variables in the middle like this, the variable x found in the original equation and the variable question mark introduced midway are different. So the transformations of the equations gets messed up. Be careful of that. So in simple terms, an equation with x can't suddenly have question mark in it. Alright. Changing the variable halfway messes up the whole thing. Even if we know that question mark equals 3, we still don't know what x is. You've got a good point. You're right, because we changed the variable. The final equation doesn't help us find the value for x from the original equation. It feels like you're really getting the meaning of variables now. I can sleep well tonight. Even though I'm a bear, I won't get duck circles under my eyes. <laughs>